Well, I never thought I'd see some of the things that are coming into World of Tanks console update uh, with the next week's update. And we're going to have a look at all of those things, along with some of the key information for the Tanks Reforged event. We've got things like brand new skins and stuff that we'll have a look at as well. And then, of course, some important changes that are coming to the game, along with a couple more new maps. And, of course, the season is coming to an end, and so we'll look through some of the information regarding that. Anyway, first things first, obviously the tanks reforged an on-track event being confirmed as the Object 263, the Soviet Tier 10 tank destroyer, that we'll have a look at now. Yeah. Recently, of course, we did get the increase to the reverse speed of the Aguru. The Object 263 has basically got a very limited amount of changes made to it. And that is, of course, that the yaw limit, which is, of course, the uh, side to side or the amount of degrees that you can turn your uh, tanks gun has gone from seven uh, degrees either side to 12 degrees. So. It now has a total of 24 degrees instead of 14, which I guess you can engage a lot more targets than what it was previously. But to be honest with you, it's not massively uh, changed, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I guess it's made it a little bit better to play. I know that it was recently updated in the Reforged Legends. That's, of course, the event where basically all of the get tanks within tier 10 basically got upgraded a little bit. Um, yeah, this is just like an additional buff to that tank line. Uh, and with this, we did get some big changes to the tanks leading up to the uh, the Object 263. And that is, of course, the SU-12254, the Tier 9. And this one's actually got some significant armor buffs. So no longer has it got 100 millimeters on the hull armor, which is, of course, the lower bit of the tank. It now has 165 millimeters of frontal hull armor, and it also then has uh, armor surrounding the gun mantlet, which has also been increased from 160 to 180 and 140 to 170, which is really, really nice for the tank. You'll be able to at least bounce a few rounds in this. And of course, what you want to be doing is wiggling a little bit, making that angle a little bit harder when you're on your reload and then deal that damage super, super quick because this tank is heavily reliant on its DPM and the just high damage it can push out to your, its opponents. Uh, it doesn't have the highest alpha damage. And as with the tier 10, uh, it's one of those that will just rip apart its opponents very easily. And that's what this whole tank line is really about. And then moving down tier 8, the SU-101. This is one that was definitely pretty bad and pretty bad in pretty much every regard. So I'm not surprised it's got some significant buffs. And that is basically the all of the gun mantlets of all of the guns has been increased from 170 to 240. So people can't just auto aim your gun mantlet and pen. Uh, you've also got the armor around the gun mantlet going up from 150 to 190. Frontal superstructure getting 30 millimeters of frontal armor. You've also got frontal hull armor going up from 90 to 105. And frontal hull armor with spare track going up by 25 to 125 as well. So... Basically, massive upgrades to the frontal armor of the tank. Is it necessarily going to make it superbly bouncy and people are going to be constantly bouncing off the SU-101? No, uh, but it definitely will help the tank out significantly from people just auto-aiming it, which, you know, if someone's auto-aiming, they're not really aiming properly. And so should they really get rewarded uh, when, you know, you're fully aiming, playing the tank and then just getting auto-aimed by a load of people uh, on the move and just hitting into your gun mantle and still penning. So that's hopefully going to avoid that happening at least a little bit. And so it's going to make it a little bit more nicer to play. And of course, we have the accuracy of all of the guns getting increased from uh, ranging from 0.37 down to 0.35. So a, a difference of about 0 0.02. Uh, and then on the 122 Top Gun, I believe uh, the 1944, which is, of course, the 122, it's actually got a 0 0.404 accuracy buff, which is quite nice. And that will bring it down a little bit more in line with some of the uh, more accurate tanks within uh, the tank destroyer line at tier eight. Obviously, with that, um, the 122s, you've also got an aim time buff of 0 0.2 uh, seconds um, with the top gun and 0 0.6 with the beginning uh, 122, which is nice. 
Now, not only that, of course, we have the SU-100M1, which is the tier 7. Uh, that's basically got a similar sort of buffs, whereby the armor has basically increased, making it somewhat more bouncy. Probably not going to do too much, though. Uh, and also, you've got the reverse speed and the accuracy getting increased as well with the tier 7. Uh, going down even further, the SU-100, which believe me, did not need any buffs, um, has got some buffs, but it is only for the 85mm uh, gun as opposed to the 122 that this tank gets, I believe, uh, which is the one you want to go for. I wouldn't really recommend firing the 85mm, um, yeah, it's not particularly that good um, but definitely go with the 122 or the 100 mil if you can in the SU-100. Then of course the SU-85, this is the 85mm that's also got buff so you've got more penetration, you're better and more accurate. And the view range has gone up but quite significantly actually so you're probably going to be quite a stealthy uh, tank destroyer now in the SU-85. Now following on, not only has uh, the tech tree line been buffed, we've also got buffs to premium vehicles and yes some of them were already buffed with the Legends Reforged event like we talked about earlier where a lot of these tank destroyers uh, did get buffed but now the ISU-130 and of course the kind of the variant of that, the HMH ISU-130, which is the Heavy Metal Heroes version, has also got buffed. And that is basically increases to its penetration, which is nice, meaning you don't have to fire as many um, premium rounds. Um, you've also got uh, your traverse limits getting uh, increased. So I believe that now you'll be able to look both 10 degrees either side. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I would assume it's kind of like the yaw. I don't know. And then, of course, the engine power has gone up. We've got ammo capacity going up, which is nice. AP velocity going up, so you'll be able to hit your opponents on the move better. And your camo uh, has also gone up whilst moving and whilst still, so it's going to be more stealthy uh, comparatively to what it was previously. Not only that, the T-103 and the Bison, uh, both pretty decent tanks in their own right if you play them correctly, uh, have basically got some buffs and so the upper hull armour of the tank is getting buffed by 60mm which is nice and the health of the tank is getting increased by 200 meaning it's probably going to be a little bit more um, have a better longevity within the game so you won't get just stumped as quickly in this tank so that's going to be always good uh, we've also got the pretty terrible kv4 ktts which is just oh god it's just a weird one um but that's basically getting significant buffs once again i believe it did get buffed with the last legends reforged as well uh, but now the view range has gone up by 20 meters you've got uh, an extra um, 45 millimeters of lower hull armor you've got dispersion going down which means that you're more accurate you've got uh, terrain resistance is going down as well meaning that you're probably easier to get around the battlefield you've got better accuracy you've got better aim time you've got more health and quite a significant 20 percent increase to your health pool which is very very nice no even 25 percent more health and you've also got two to two kilometers an hour faster reverse speed which is always good now what do you think of those buffs are they decent enough for the object 263 and to be honest with you the 263 is pretty awful position right now and giving it just an extra couple of degrees to be able to move about that's not going to make any difference to the tank and people just aren't going to play it there's better tier 10 tank destroyers from the russian line and i mean if you compare it to things like the fe 4005 the badger the fe 215b183 uh, just basically the gorilla you know any tank destroyer at tier 10 it's just no match and i don't get why you'd ever play the 263 unless you really do enjoy that kind of play style but it's not a tank that's necessarily very competitive at tier 10. I don't think these buffs are going to make it so. Maybe some of the tanks within tier uh, 6 to tier 9 are going to be more competitive, but definitely not the Object 263 uh, with those your limits being changed. 
Uh, of course, with this on track event, you will be able to pick up an extra 25% XP for the next two weeks going towards the Object 263 line. Uh, and you'll also receive a 50% silver discount between tiers 3 and tier 6 and 30% between tiers 7 and tier 10. So be sure if you want to pick up any of these tanks, uh, whether you had them previously or you want to get them next, uh, they will be on sale. So that will be a nice time to pick it up. Now, Moving on with this video, well, we've got quite a few things to be talking about in terms of the next update, and we're going to have a look at that now. Um, of course, with the ongoing events, which is, of course, the Kinetic Fury season and the November challenge, uh, whereby you can basically pick up some free tanks as part of a season pass for the Kinetic Fury season. And, of course, the November challenge, where you can pick up another free tank, which is, of course, either the Minotaur, the Hydra IS-6, or the, um, I know the IS-6 Black even, uh, and the Demolisher, which is the T-28. Uh, and that's these are all versions uh, that were released. Um, and of course, you can pick which one you want to get. And they're pretty evenly spaced out. You've got 1,700 pretty much of each one being picked and 5,100 tanks earned so far. I think it's quite a hard challenge if you are a more casual player because... You basically have to play like 300 games uh, in the month and which is quite a significant amount. I'm nowhere near that actually completing it. And so I don't think I'm going to get one of these. But I'm sure as many of you have done, the 5000 of you that have managed to do it, uh, it's a good thing for you. As far as the next thing, of course, last week, we, of course, got the TCM AGS, which I did a video on the Western Alliance Deton era light tank, which to be honest with you, I've played quite a bit in it now and it is just pretty good. You can <laughs> you can earn so much silver with this tank, it's ridiculous. Earning about 400,000 silver on average per game with the times 2 silver boost, uh, which is really, really good for getting my silver up for World War 2 game mode. And of course, the last week's stuff brought in the changes to the Jagdpanzer E100, which will be ending uh, the on-track event uh, this week on Tuesday when the Object 263 one comes on uh, on track. Furthermore, this week we have plus one minus one event with premium uh, matchmaker changes now live for the weekend. Uh, tanks with preferential matchmaking uh, plus one minus one normally will still have uh, plus one minus one during the event. And also with this turkey shoot, 5000 plus final stage completions have already been done. We've also got a new World War II premium released, which was the Emil 51 Swedish tier eight heavy with a 54.5% win rate in the first three days. We've also got select skins on sale, which are 30% off. We've got um, equipment on sale as well with 30% off. And the one shot wonder challenge to earn yourself the Dreadnought KV2, which if you haven't already done, I would implore you to get the Dreadnought because it is just an amazing premium tank that you just have to own if you play World of Tanks console. And so really do try to get your hands on it this weekend if you're watching it on the weekend or if it's gone past Tuesday on the following week. Unfortunately for you, you will not be able to pick up the Dreadnought for free as these people may have done, the 1,609 of you who have already earned it. Um, moving forward, obviously the limited edition black tanks are on sale, so as with Wargaming, grab them, enjoy their increased XP rate. I wouldn't grab them, they're pretty terrible tanks to be honest, for the most part they're not particularly very competitive and you'd be better off playing a better tank which will grant you better chance of getting more XP anyway within the game because you'll be, be performing better. So don't feel like you have to get them because they're a limited edition because yeah, they're not particularly that good. Then, of course, we have what's happening this week, which we covered. And if you want to have a look at what happened last week, you can, of course, check out last week's video that was on the channel uh, titled Update News. We do them every week. And so stay tuned for that. Of course, next week, we also have Thanksgiving week, which has basically been changed or the a few things have been put into the game um, that are pretty decent, to be honest with you, especially if you want to earn some silver. And that is that post-war fast track has increasing earns between the 23rd of November and the 29th. So you've got seven days total to be able to earn plus 300 percent silver and XP earn to 20, 62.5 percent 
a silver and 50% more XP. So you can basically earn between 300% and 62.5% more silver playing in the post-war era. And that is available basically for the M46 pattern, the T44A, uh, a plus 300% silver earn, uh, which is times four silver and 300% times, um, well, 300% more XP, which is four times XP uh, for playing both the M46 pattern pattern and the T44A. Hmm, I wonder why Wargaming are trying to promote their pretty much dead game mode within World of Tanks by giving this times four silver run and then trying to say that it's a success. Yeah, it doesn't seem very good to me. Looks like the post-war game mode in Cold War has not gone down a tree and granted I was playing yesterday at prime time at about six o'clock um, and I couldn't find very many games and it took me two minutes to get into a game playing in the uh, middle era yeah it's not looking too good for that game mode and I guess that people just aren't interested in the cold war uh, game mode within modern armor uh, world of tanks so I guess we'll have to move forward to maybe when they release some decent uh, tanks within that game mode. And I think their introduction of just premium tanks and overpowered premium tanks within that mode have just kind of ruined it for the majority of people. And they feel like, you know what, why would I want to grind out a texture tank that's just worse and doesn't earn me anywhere near as much silver? And I'm spending five million just kicking out the tank in the first place. It doesn't make sense. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll move on. Of course, with the other tanks in the post-war, you can basically earn 62.5% more silver, which is, trust me, going to earn you a ton of silver. So I guess if for no other reason than that, you may want to jump on and play Cold War this um, next week uh, between the 23rd of November and the 29th. But definitely don't go doing it thinking that it's a fantastic game mode. Um, at least personally, I don't think so. Uh, but you have to kind of make your own decision. Maybe give it a try. I've given it a try. I just don't think it's really there and it certainly hasn't got everything that I'd want from a World of Tanks game mode. Uh, as far as some other things, we also have new black skins uh, with a mix of popular tech tree and premium skins coming next week. So this is Wargaming's uh, introduction of basically skins and cosmetics into the game which you can purchase. Uh, I have no problem with that. I think that they should be doing more of this and stop releasing overpowered premiums. Because do you know what? I don't mind spending uh, five pounds to be able to get maybe a skin. You know, you're more likely to do that. People are more likely to do that with the tank that they actually really love. Uh, and to be honest, I think it's a good way of just creating more customization. I think that's what that's something they should probably be looking to do. More customization, uh, better choice of things that you can do to your tanks, make them more your own uh, and unique. And I think this is a good change. Uh, many of you will probably be complaining that uh, they're just releasing skins to make loads of money but to be honest with you I think it's a better use of some of their time at least with um, regards to development of the game and just trying to make the game a little bit more diverse than just releasing overpowered premiums I'd much rather see this sort of stuff uh, to earn them money rather than the uh, a lot of the Cold War tanks that they've been releasing recently and some of the World War II stuff as well now these tanks, of course, are on screen right now. I'm not going to go through them all, but some notable ones are the SU-130 PM, uh, the uh, Emil 1951, uh, the T-110 E5, the E-75, and the IS-3, which are all interesting ones uh, that you can get some skins for. And then, of course, the Cold War, you can get the Object 165, the T-55A, and the M-48A5 uh, pa pattern. So if you want that, then I guess you can purchase some skins. There are about 3,000 gold each, I think, for the tier 10 ones, ranging down to probably 1,500 for the lower tier tanks uh, within that list. There's also a new 3D Commander Vasquez uh, recruit reel now. We've also got the pictures of these, which we'll go through at the end of the video uh, to show you what the skins actually look like. And then we've got the Tanks Reforged event, which we've gone through. A turkey treats free bundle as well uh, so you can go to the store and claim for free one day of premium two inscription vouchers two emblem vouchers 150,000 silver three enhanced fire extinguishers three enhanced repair kits and three enhanced med kits so it's just a nice little uh, bonus that you can pick up for free so make sure that you do that in the store don't forget about it from november 23rd so there we go
As far as moving forward, we of course have the Black Friday sales on the premium tech tree where um, what Wargaming have previously done, they haven't actually stated what they're going to do with the Black Friday, uh, but usually it's about 30% off every single premium tank on the premium tech tree. I uh, don't know what they'll do this year. Previously, within Black Friday, they used to actually do 50% off quite a lot of premiums, uh, if not all of them back in the day. I'm talking about five years ago, uh, but I don't think that that will probably happen this Black Friday. They've tended to recently, within the last couple of years, to be looking at about a 30% discount and maybe a 50% discount on a couple of different uh, premium tanks. But yeah, it kind of varies. And then, of course, we have the plus 400% XP multiplier on first win between November 25 and 28th, which is five times XP. So make sure that you're playing and playing each tank that you have that is a tech tree one uh, to get that times five bonus on your first win. So just spam out a load of games in your tech tree ones or tanks that you want to progress in the most. Um, and then you'll be able to get that five times XP. And you can carry that on through as many f tanks that you actually own, as long as it's your first win of the day. You can do that three times because it's available for three days, uh, which gives you what? For playing three games, you can essentially get 15 games worth of uh, XP, which is really nice. And then if you add on boosters on top of that, you're going to be getting, you know, 20 time or 20 games for the price of three. Yeah, it's not a bad one. Then, of course, we have times five and times six commander XP and times two silver boosters on sale at a discount. So if you're interested in picking up boosters, which is, to be honest with you, very expensive if you want to actually do this, um, then yeah, I guess you can pick those up as well. Now, on to some more interesting stuff with regard to the future of World of Tanks console and looking at the development into the game. Uh, we've got a big thing that I think we'll have to kind of talk about right now, and that is the Panzer 5-4 rebalance suggestion, where they're looking at moving it from Tier 5 up to a Tier 6. Um, that's the basis of this. So instead of it being tier five that can play up to tier seven, their choice is to move it up to tier six, still play up to tier seven. So it will become a pref preferential matchmaking tank. So it only sees tier sevens now. Um, and it will also earn more XP from 30 to 40%. So this is not finalized. Wargaming haven't said that this is the exact thing that they're going to be doing. But this is very, very good for the lower tiers and trying to keep hold of some of the players that jump on the game. The Panzer 5-4 is just an utterly broken tank. And anyone that says that the Panzer 5-4 is not broken is just misinformed it, it really is just utterly broken and you've had long enough to play this broken tank if you've owned it if you want it to remain the same i think yeah it's it shouldn't remain the same it's not good for the other 29 people within the game it's not good for your team because it's just broken and it's so much better than every single tank within that tier it is basically a tier six at tier five uh, it has the hit points of a tier six heavy tank it's a medium tank that can go 60 kilometers an hour uh yeah just absolutely ridiculous and the fact that this is still a tier five and the fact that wargaming didn't do anything sooner uh, it's been seven years that this game has been going around and they've still not done nothing it really is uh, quite late on and i think that you've had enough of playing that broken tank and i'm really really glad that that has been nerfed and i'm sure many of you will be exactly in that boat as well even if you own it you have to accept that this was just utterly bonkers and the fact you only probably paid for four pounds for it you know that's like a pint you can't be too upset that they've nerfed this broken thing that probably actually costs wargaming more money than it actually earns them because at the end of the day people that stop playing the game because of tanks like this mean that they aren't going to be getting any money from that person that's left the game so absolutely thumbs up from me really is one of the biggest things that i like I like that Wargaming are now nerfing some of these broken premium tanks that they've introduced. They shouldn't have been brought into the game in the first place, but at least tackling it head on and saying, look, these are broken. We're not going to be dealing with this anymore. We're going to get rid of them. We're going to nerf them. We're going to do something to them. That's always a plus from me. And I definitely think that this is something that should happen more and that balancing of these tanks should happen because let's be honest, um, it is just not fair when you pick and pay and get this just utterly broken tank. So be sure if you really do want to play your Panzer 5-4 in a broken matchup, 
do it right now. Uh, take the last hurrah. You're not going to be able to do it for long. And so, yeah, I guess if you want to play this one, then do so now. Uh, of course, with regards to the biggest changes, of course, we've got quite a few. And that is that class-based matchmaking tests will be between December 3rd and 5th. Far, uh, the December the 3rd and the 5th, which is the weekend. Um, so it'll be ran over the weekend. Basically, what this means is that every single team will be consisting of the exact same classes. So you have five heavy tanks on one team, five heavy tanks on the enemy team, five medium tanks on one team, five medium tanks on the other, vice versa, um, etc, etc. So you'll basically be coming up against the exact same classes, uh, regardless of what team you're on, there is not going to be like three artillery, two artillery on the enemy team, and then three light tanks and one light tank and five heavies and two mediums. Yeah, it's going to be much more balanced so that there will be classes that are the exact same on each team, meaning that you won't have these matches, or at least potentially won't have the matches where it's just one team wins because they got all of the heavy tanks and the other team didn't get those heavy tanks on a heavy tank map. As far as some other things, we've got an urn challenge coming for the HMH AMX M4 MLE uh, 49. So don't purchase this if it ever comes on sale in the next couple of weeks because you can get it for free. Don't be one of those that goes out and buys it because trust me, it won't be worth it. You can pick it up for free between November 30th and probably uh, December 14th. That usually runs for two weeks. Uh, I don't know if it will be the month long one. I'm not entirely sure, but make sure that you don't purchase the HMH AMX M4 MLE within the next two weeks before this earn challenge comes out as you'll probably regret it when you realize it does come out for free so be sure tier 8 premium is coming out for free uh, maps returning in the next big update have been confirmed and they are Teepval Ridge, uh, Resinai, Erlenberg and Lakeville. Four fantastic maps that are going to be so much nicer to get your hands on. Uh, two of them will be available for Cold War being Teepval Ridge and Resinai, the bigger ones. Uh, and then Erlenberg and Lakeville are just World War II. All of them will be available for World War II so don't think that you're only going to get two. And they'll all be once again available for World War Two. So much better map rotation. And then not only this, the next tanks reforged after the Object 263 is going to be a UK TD line. And Wargaming have put the Death Star anyone. So looks like the FV215B183 may be getting some buffs and potentially the FV4005. I don't know which one. Um, I guess both of them maybe because they are very similar tanks. We'll just have to wait and see and potentially uh, we'll be looking at some nice buffs. Maybe they'll give it the more alpha damage like it previously had. I very much doubt it, uh, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so yeah, I'm interested to see what that's going to do. Also, we've got a communication radial wheel. So this is something people have been complaining about. And trust me, I'm in that boat. This should have been in the game already. It should still be in the game. They basically, with update 6.0, removed a lot of the features of the radial communication where you can say, uh, follow me and advance and fall back and all of this sort of stuff that was in the radial wheel um, and, and stuff like that. They basically removed all of that out, gave you some really crap options as a replacement. And that is basically what's happened. Hopefully we'll be getting some better ones come back out to be able to, you know, better inform your team. If you can't communicate via your voice, the radial wheel is so much better um, for players that, you know, maybe they don't want to jump into the game chat because sometimes it is very toxic. Um, so, yeah, it will just help, I think, a lot with uh, helping your team to understand maybe uh, what you're doing within the game or what your plans are so they can, you know, know what you're doing and uh, they can act on that. Of course, with this, we've also got HUD. So, some changes added in the next update and more in the works and we're still investigating revamping the entire system so that the communications in battle are easier. So what I'm assuming is that the HUD will be coming with the post uh, or the pre-World War II or World War II HUD will be coming back to the game even, sorry, uh, messing that one up, but 
the Wargaming did confirm that they will be looking at getting the World War II HUD back into World of Tanks console. So you will be able to play the pre-update 6.0 HUD. You'll be able to choose between the new one and the old one, depending on what your preference is now. And hopefully this will bring back some of the older players. Maybe it will look easier. And I guess that what they're also saying is they're just thinking about just revamping everything uh, and putting it back to where, what it previously was. I don't know. Uh, obviously, they need to clarify this in a later update news and we'll keep on with the update news to make sure that that does happen so that's always a good thing i think that the hud does need a little bit of tweaking and i guess that that's what they're aiming to do now of course the xbox super test which is today is the deadline to fill out your forms if you were accepted uh, so make sure to check your spam folder that's already passed so that's not really relevant uh, we've got the ramen emblem coming early december we've also got christmas holiday event which will be returning this year and more details are to come which is of course the toy tank game mode that came in last year uh, had a whole load of problems with that game mode uh, but yeah it's coming back and you'll be able to uh, play in that within the map rotation it's just an extra uh, event map basically now furthermore commander customization is coming back between february and march of 2022 so we've got you know looking at three months away uh, before they'll be bringing back your commander where you can have the british voice or the uh, soviet voice or the usa vo uh, american voice or the mexican voice or whatever it is we had loads of them um but basically they'll be coming back and you'll be able to have your crew voices back along with the picture that you want to pick and stuff like that so i think that that's always good and not only that, the Spectator HUD updates, some updates are coming in the next big update and even more in the following updates. Uh, they've also stated that map weather variants, so things like uh, Typhoon, um, some of the uh, other ones that are like Blizzard and Sandstorm, I absolutely hated them and they shouldn't be in the game in the first place, in my personal opinion. Having tier 2 view range at tier 10 just isn't fun um, and it just promotes camping uh, because that's basically how you win on those maps. But basically they've said that they're not coming back anytime soon as br the priority is bringing in more maps before adding variants i don't mind uh the variants of the maps which are just cosmetic and they're just literally like himmelsdorf but maybe uh modern or something like that you know where it's not an actual change to the visual mechanics of the game uh just a case of it looks different you know i think we had quite a few different variants of the same map that were basically just changed maybe one was previously uh in the summer and then you've got like a winter like i think malinovka had a summer and a winter variant it's not a massive change all it is is that it looks like a snowy map and then it looks like a grass uh, in the summer so you know it's not big uh, but i think that, that would be good just adds a little bit of something extra it's not major and i definitely don't think that this is something that needs to come into the game anytime soon uh, of course we then have the ranked tournament which is tank ace competition uh, coming last week in january uh, we've also got mercenary contracts which are coming before the end of the year and more details in two weeks so mercenary contracts are coming back before the end of the year we confirmed this a couple weeks back but they're saying in two weeks time uh, in the update news they'll be producing uh, some proper details as to what's coming in those two weeks i believe in a previous stream or something they talked about the fact that the machine will be the first contract to come back don't know if that's confirmed no idea but i think somewhere along the line someone has said that within one of these update news um, and i'm sure many of you will probably remind me uh, in the comment section if you do remember that but i think the machine is probably going to be the one that will come back not confirmed or anything don't think don't know if wargaming have confirmed that uh, but it's just uh, an inkling i've got in the back of my brain uh, we've also got creating new maps is not a priority until we bring back old maps as promised so this is a bit disappointing that there will be absolutely no new maps they'll just be revamped ones and i'm a little bit disappointed you know maybe it would have been cool to bring back some of the uh, some brand new ones uh, in between uh, but yeah i guess bringing back the old ones is easier for wargaming to do and that's what they're probably going to do uh, then we've also got clan management tools within the game designs that are in the works multi-turreted tanks are in the works of course we have the french wheeled light tanks coming at some point soon uh, 
we've also got 3D German commanders in the works to be released with German Cold War tanks, which have now obviously been confirmed. There will be German Cold War tanks coming fairly soon. Of course, we do have the British Cold War tanks as well. And Xbox Party Chat Bug is also being investigated. So there we go. Of course, if you want to check out the skins and stuff and the commanders, they are on screen now. I'll go slowly through them. You can see the E5 skin, uh, the T92 light tank skin, uh, the T77 here. We've got the uh, the new Emil 1951, which is actually a pretty decent tank. We did a review on that. We've got the Jag Tiger 8.8. .8. We've got the T55A, the M48A5 pattern, E75, uh, the T55A, the IS-3, uh, the T32, uh, the SU-130 PM. And there we go. That's all of them. Of course, hopefully you'll be interested in what's been changed and let me know in the comment section down below. Do you like the fact that they've nerfed the Panzer V IV? Do you like the fact that they're bringing in some new maps? Do you like the fact that they have uh, said that they're going to be bringing in this 300% XP to try and boost people into a game mode that's been pretty much dead since its release uh, within World of Tanks console? So let me know. What do you think? And of course, let me know on the Object 263. If you want to check out some other videos on the channel, I'll have them on screen. And be sure to check out uh, some other playlists as well. Other than that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And I hope you have a great week following. Goodbye.